it is Caitlin, and today we are making 1830 sleeve puffs. Now the workwoman's guide does not have um, a pattern for sleeve support exactly, but it does have lots and lots of sleeve patterns, and a couple of the short ones, it specifically says you can use them for petticoat um, sleeves. Um, of course those probably would have been the full body petticoats, not necessarily like um, sleeve supports but the same concept, and I'm looking at an original in um, the National Museums of Scotland, and I'm looking at this pattern here um, in the Workman's Guide, and I'm seeing some similarities, so I think we're going to make our sleeve supports from this pattern. So it's just short sleeves, and it has a three figure, so this is the finished sleeve, so it's kind of poofed out on one side, pattern piece laid out, and pattern piece sewn together. And so it says, these are for dresses, frocks, or even petticoats when full sleeves are worn and light. Cut the pattern of the whole sleeve in paper and then turning up your material to the sufficient size crosswise, which means on the bias, lay the sleeve open upon it, placing the long side of the pattern upon the cross or double part of the material. Both sleeves may thus be cut out at once. And so we have um, lots of dimensions. I'm probably going to make up the largest size just because I'm Sarah and Sarah is super fashionable and um, very wealthy. So I'm going to do large fashionable sleeves are probably going to be our best bet for her. But they have lots of sizes. A second size, third size, girl size, small girl size, and child size. So lots of options. I'm going to continue reading. When cut out, fold each piece Fold each sleeve in half, see figure 26, and hollow one fold out to form the inside. Take care to hollow the sleeve prom properly so as to make a pair, the straight side of the sleeve being in front, which is to be the hollowed. If the sleeve should require joining, join two selvages together. And then there's like a diagram for that over on the other page. In making up the bottom of the sleeve, may be either set into a band as in the plate, or into a piping at the top of it. it is gathered and frequently a piping is put around it which gives it a neat finish. It is set into the dress quite plainly under the arms. The fullness is thrown a little back for if brought too forward it is very unbecoming to the figure. We are going to go ahead and make the paper pattern first and I went ahead and printed out the plate that way I didn't have to keep switching back and forth in the book. That is just easier for me so I'm going to get my butcher paper. So the first one is C to G, and I just need to know how long to make this. 20 nails. Okay, I'm going to need a calculator. Well, really, I don't. It should be 45 inches. Let me check that. Yeah, okay, cool. See, I can do math. That's a good thing. All right, 45 inches. That is quite a large sleeve. This is how long the sleeve is, and y'all can't even see that on the camera because it is quite wide. There'll be a very full sleeve. Okay, so we have that part. How about C to H and G to H? So on this level side here, F is the very tip corner, and E should be two nails. That should be four and a quarter nails, if I'm not mistaken. Or sorry, two, four and a quarter inches if it's two nails. So that's right here, which means that this part goes straight down. And there's the first part of the sleeve. It's rather short. And then A to B is three nails. Which is six and three quarters inches. And B to D is 14 nails. Okay. Okay, let's do this way. H to I is six nails, which is 13 and a half inches, and that's halfway between these two pieces. We're going to fold them halfway. That way I have a halfway mark. And 13 and a half inches. It's this is where the end of my sleeve is going to be. Okay. And at this point, I just might draw lines. Oops. 
you can find out that I think. Let's try five nails, which is ten and a quarter. I think that looks closer to the engraving. I mean, I have so much white cotton that this doesn't work. We can always cut it again. So yeah, that definitely... Oh, that's supposed to be sewn together now. I'm going to add a little bit to this piece. Okay. So it's going to hollow it out. We'll have to hollow it out just a little bit more. I'll fold it this way so I can actually see what I'm doing. I should cut it up to the very bottom and give myself two sleeves. Um, I'm thinking I might want to mark where we're going to put the boning channels before I sew these up. So this is the hollowed out side, so this is the front. I'm thinking one more or less right down here, because there was one that was on the um, vertical, at least. I don't know if there was two. I thought that two. Alright, the first one looks like it's about an inch from the sides here. Um, it gets a little bit higher up here. Maybe an inch and three quarters. Next one looks to be about two inches above that one. And all the way across. I think it would probably be prudent to go ahead and stitch this together. I have to make sure I get it. I have to make sure I get a right and a left, not you know two rights or two lefts. And I'm most likely going to run and sell these seams. I am at the point where I'm trying to finish selling the seam. So I just took um, when you fill a seam, you just run it, and you take one of the seams and fold it and, and cut it, and then fold it once, and fold the other one, fold it twice. And we're going to run it again. I cut some one inch strips of bias um, from scrap fabric, uh, folded them in on each side so it's like maybe three eighths of an inch wide now. And these are going to be my channels for the boning. Or rather the cane, because we're using cane instead of boning. And I'm choosing to run this instead of doing a back stitch because the original um, sleeve support clearly shows a running stitch, which I prefer anyway because it's quicker. Now with our channels sewn in, we're going to insert some cane. So I just have, I'm not even going to dye it, all those, at least for parasols, canes like this were dyed, usually a darker color to mimic baleen. But I'm not even going to bother dyeing it because um, it doesn't look like it's a particularly dark color in the original. I can't exactly tell if the original is um, a flat reed or if a round reed. Um, I had some of this left over because I bought it to um, make parasol ribs with and then realized it was far too small and I need square ones so I was going to cut this one, cut these down to be square. Yeah, you can't do that if they're this small. So I have tons and tons of rattan like this and nothing to do with it. So we're going to put it in the sleeve supports and use some of that. right in there just like you do with um, boning. I think I'm also going to go ahead and put a gathering thread on the top and the bottom of each sleeve um, for later and then we can work on putting the boning casings in the center. Casings are all in. Before we put in the horizontal case I think we should go ahead and put the bands on the um, bottom and the top. So I cut 
those and sewed them up. They are the bottom ones because the original has the bottom ones being smaller than the top ones. So the bottom ones I cut three inches and the top ones I cut four inches. So to get the length measurements on these little bands, I just measured my arm at the top near my shoulder and on and near my elbow. And those are the measurements that I used. And according to the original, I want to focus most of my gathers on the top part, not on the bottom. And by that I mean like where the seam is, I don't want as many gathers as I want on the rest of it. Alright, well there's slave one all ready to be stitched up. Thinking I'm wanting a back stitch for this, I think it'll be better overall than doing, say, a running stitch. Alright, they're almost done. We just gotta put in cane for the rest of this. So I think I'll do in the middle one first. I cut these at 36 inches, which seems about right. I can cut it down or I have plenty more to cut more if we need to. But I left them here and I'm just gonna squeeze it in. I'm gonna start with the middle one and then decide from there what I need the other ones to be. And that looks about right. So what I might do is go ahead and put this other one in first. We'll do it one size at a time, and then I think we might do the top one and then the bottom one last. Oh, we almost don't need one on the bottom. We can almost just get away with two. There's one in the Met, I think, that only has like one going this way. But I'd kind of like a few more just to... I like to have at least, you know, one more to make sure that it's what I want. And we need to measure to make sure things are the same size. So I don't have one sleeping in the other, so that's 31 inches. It looks like it's smaller. This one's 30, so I just need to pull it out just a little bit more. Alright, so now we got two that are the same size. Let's look at this top one. To measure it from here. So I need to keep these gathers on here. Roughly 25 inches, let's cut it 30. I've been giving myself some overlap. I am glad I took off the extra 4 inches on top because I do have a shorter arm. And so even this right here already goes from my shoulder to my elbow. So it's a good size for me. So this part looks pretty small. Just measure just right in a little across. Seventeen, let's cut them twenty. By the way, this is like all the read I have left from this parasol project that we don't gonna work for parasols. So yay. If anyone has any projects to do with rattan read. I'm all ears. I will say I'm very pleased with how light they are. That's one thing I didn't want was something really heavy on my arms. Okay, that one could probably have been just a little bit longer. Maybe like 22, but I think that's acceptable. So as far as ties, I think I want four of them on each sleeve. I don't know the original. I can't really tell what they are. They're probably seamed cotton. It looks like the same material as, as the poofs. Like fairly narrow ones. We cut them two inches. They'll probably be about three quarters of an inch wide or seam. those and make some ties. Very last step, let's stitch some ties in. So I made up the ties and yeah, I guess we're ready to stitch them in. Not entirely sure what's the best way, I'm guessing just going around all the edges. I 
I'll go ahead and put them on and we'll look at them on a person. Here we are. So yeah, sleep puffs. They're quite poopy. And of course I don't have my corset or my um, shifts done yet. So um, yeah, they're not staying up very well, but they will once I tie them into the safe. So that's an easy fix. But they are, they're not super tight on my arm, but they are just about where they need to be. And I like them because like I can still reach up and do my hair and that sort of thing because they collapse just a little bit. It's really nice actually. And they're not as bothersome as I thought they would be. I think because they're so light and airy and there's not just a bunch of wool sitting on my arm, it's, they're not obtrusive. Um, I'm sure width-wise, someone trying to get close to me maybe a little bit so, but um, I don't feel any discomfort or anything. I can still put my arms down, but you know, when you just brush your arms, like this is fine. So they're actually way more comfortable than I thought they would be. So that's a good thing. But yeah, I think they look fairly similar to the original. They're shaped like the original. There's more poop up this way and less all the way around, which is what I wanted. Um, so I'm very glad to see that that actually worked out. Um, if I did them again, I think I'd probably do them the same way. I don't think I'd really change anything. I mean, I think the length is fine um, for what they need to be. I mean, I guess you could add a little bit more length, but I mean, it goes just up to my elbow. Um, but I can move in them. I feel like they're plenty big, like they're going to encompass quite a bit of fabric. I know most of the 1830 sleeves, they take a yard a piece, and so I'm encompassing like a yard of fabric. I think this is like 30 inches wide at its widest point, so it's not going to like super stretch them out, but it'll still be poofy enough, I think. So I think it's a good circumference as well. So, yeah. Fun little project. Um, it took a little bit longer than I expected. I only had like a day scheduled for this. I think it took me more like a day and a half, but yesterday I was being kind of lazy about the whole thing. So, I didn't get a whole lot done. Maybe that's why. But, yeah, another piece of my 1830s wardrobe is done. I think next we're going to work on shifts and then a pair of saves, after which we'll be at the point where we can make dresses <laughs> to get those done. They're um, an interesting piece of clothing, but uh, I, I like these a whole lot more than I think I would have liked the stuffed version because these are not heavy and um, they're not hot. So... I'm glad I did these. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video.